Welcome back to the Crochet Credits with my friends at Yarnspirations.com. This is the Waffle Pattern Dish Cloth. This is Bernat Handicrafter Cotton Twist that is showing but I'm going to be demonstrating here with just Lily Sugar and Cream as you see in jute color. You're going to need a four millimeter size G crochet hook. It's a nice two easy um, rows to repeat and we're gonna get started immediately. Let's begin our journey right now. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. Let's begin our beginning. I've been painting outside and it has been a long weekend. It's Easter at the time of filming this. So I've just uh, got paint on my hands but I'm glued. So we're going to chain 41. So 1, 2, 3, four and five. Go all the way to 41 and meet me back here in just a moment. Once you have your chain done I'm going to recommend to you to go into the back hump of the chain if you prefer not to do that. I've seen more and more people kind of protesting to do that. So that if you don't want to do it that's up to you. So you're now going to go four chain from the hook. So one, two, three and four and I go into the back loop so that it makes the bottom side of that same chain look like a regular stitch. But you can decide what works for you. So you're going to double crochet that and so this will count as the first double crochet this chain uh, that you skipped and then this one. So you technically are looking at two double crochets at this point. I want you to then just move along your chain and apply one double crochet all the way across and I will see you on the other side and this is row number one. So I came in all the way to the last one. There is a total of 39 double crochets which includes that chain space that you skipped. Okay, so that is 39 all the way there. Let's begin row number two. So row number two and three is going to be the repeat for the remaining of your project. Let's start number two. In reading ahead I realized that the first two stitches and the last two stitches that you have are going to be kind of like the buffer zone of like a bowling alley. The rest of it is going to be playing with inside this. So as you begin I need you then to chain three which counts as a double crochet. And then the very next stitch that you have is going to be a double crochet front post. And so let's begin to do that. So do that one. So you come in from the front and going in across and then yarning over pulling it through and then pull through two and two. That's a double crochet front post. Now we're going to start then the idea of going all the way across. So we're going to double crochet back post the next three stitches. So these three are going to be in the back post. So you wrap the hook and come in from behind and pop it between the post and then back out to the back. You will get used to the hand motion if this is new for you. Yarn over pull through, pull through two and two and you gotta do uh, two more like that. So yarn over from the back between the next post, pull through, pull through two and two and do the next one. So there's a total of three in a row. Now this is the end of the repeat. So we can see that by the asterisks in the pattern. So we go back to the repeat and the repeat says the next one is a front post and double crochet and then the next three are back post double crochet and this is what's creating the waffle look. And so this will provide um, texture for you when you're doing your dishes and it uh, help us to thicken up this project as well. So you go back to the repeat after those three are in the back post. The next one is a front post double crochet and then the next three are back post. So I want you to do this same repeating of the pattern all the way to the other side. I see you close to the last to make sure that you're finishing off properly and this will conclude number two in a moment. So I'm repeating the pattern going all the way across. So the repeat remember was one front post double crochet and then the next three are back post double crochet and then the repeat starts all over again. So once the final repeat is done which you see there's two stitches left, uh, left as I promised. So the next one here is going to be a front post and double crochet and the very last stitch is just going to be a double crochet into this turning chain. Do not go into a gap space because that will keep it open but go right into the chain itself and, and just double crochet like that. Okay and now turn your work and let's begin row number three. So you can see the other side looks completely different. 
So this is a one sided pattern. So when you're looking at this side you have to do opposite to what you see. So you're going to begin by chaining three which will count as your double crochet and then you're gonna double crochet back post into the next one and this helps keep that ribbing on the other side which is the good side, right? So yarn over and go and do a back post double crochet. Now you have these three. Those are each gonna be a double crochet. So these ones you don't have to worry about uh, putting them as a back post like you did before. Just keep them as regular double crochet. And once you see this, see how it's sunken behind? Keep that in behind by doing a back post double crochet. So you see you're only providing texture to one of the stitches and not all of them like you did on the last row. So please do this same idea going all the way across and I'll see you at the end of number three in just a moment. So I'm keeping in line with what I have and we're gonna be finishing row number three in a moment and then we're gonna re be returning back to row number two. So this one here is a back post double crochet and the very last stitch is a double crochet in the turning chain. So make sure you go right into the chain work itself never to a gapping space and that'll keep it closed. Let's turn your work and let's review and this is what it looks like so far. Let's do row number two once again. So now I need you to repeat rows number two and three. We do use uh, video chapters in this video which you can scroll through but I'll get you started anyway. So row number two if you recall was chain three counts as your first double crochet and the next one is going to be a front post double crochet. So the texture will all be provided in row number two again. These three will become a back post double crochet and as soon as you do that you're going to see the texture of the waffle suddenly just appear. So it's gonna become even more evident now that you're moving up. See? Then the next one here is a front post double crochet and the next three are back post double crochets. You'll do that all the way across. On the second last one you'll keep it as a front post double crochet and then you'll double crochet into the turning chain and then you'll turn it around and do row number three all over again just like you have and you are going to finish once you have ten inches done and you'll finish on a row three. So the ten inches will be done when you see it on the back side being ten inches and I'll pick you up at the end of this in a moment. So I'm gonna crochet this and sit quietly in my room and do this. So I'm back and through the miracle of pressing pause and doing the work behind the scenes. This is what I have. So we'll wanna finish on a row three which will be on the back side about the end uh, here. So now I want to just trim my yarn. You might as well use up most of the yarn ball. Like what are you also gonna use a little bit pieces that are left over, right? So use as much as you can. Why not? And uh, this is almost the full ball. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna pull through and lock it. And I am going to take my tapestry needle and this is what I highly recommend. This is something that you will be manipulating dishes and etc. with. It could be a decorative thing too for all I know. Okay, so let's bring you in. The goal here is to stay on the back side so you can tell what's the back because the texture is on the front. And I'm going to put this through and my goal is, is to put the needle through so that it will separate some plies. So don't just weasel it between strands. Actually separate the plies itself. It helps it get stuck even more. So you pull through. When you pull through the first time don't over pull so it changes the shape. And then going through a slightly different path you'll wanna go in the opposite direction. And again separate those fibers but stay on the back of it so the uh, needle should never go to the front side of the work. So you don't impact the look and then a third time is a charm. So back and forth a total of three times on the back side just weaseling its way through the fibers. And once you're done you can safely just trim that down right to the project itself and that should never fall out on you. Never a guarantee but that's the way it is and then you can enjoy your new waffle stitch dishcloth. And this is a great little pattern by Yarnspirations.com. We hope you have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.